Welcome back, dear viewers. You're still watching Nile Cruz from the Orban Garden in Giza. Egypt has an ambitious vision to transform into a hub for producing and exporting clean energy, especially green hydrogen and solar and wind energy. Minister of Electricity and Renewable Energy, Dr. Mohammed Shekir, confirmed that the expansion of electricity generation projects using new and renewable energy in Egypt has become indispensable, revealing that these projects have a positive impact on the state on different levels. Dr. Shekir added that, that the projects uh, to generate electricity from renewable energy um, have significant economic gains uh, as they will be a major reason for the decrease in the selling price of electricity in the near future because it is considered to be much lower in cost than traditional energy. To know more about renewable energy um, and the importance of uh, uh, the energy transition uh, at the moment, uh, we have the pleasure of hosting with us Dr. Hisham Abdesalem, Economic Advisor in Environmental Technology Affairs. Dr. Abdesalem, thank you for joining us. A very good day to you, sir. Thank you for having me. Thank you. A very good day, sir, and it's a pleasure to have you with us in today's program. Okay. Sir, Egypt aims to produce green hydrogen with uh, least um, lost worldwide cost rather worldwide would you tell us more about this issue please sure green hydrogen is a relatively new technology but it's growing quite significantly uh, at a very high pace um, the the main reason Egypt is quite uh, a significant player in that space is due to the availability of an abundance of clean energy in Egypt um, basically, green hydrogen um, strategy has been announced by the Egyptian government to produce over 20,000 tons of H2 or GH2 or green hydrogen, as well as over 100,000 tons of green ammonia, the main component for fertilizers. The economic impact of such technology and such product is quite significant in renewable energy. The use of green hydrogen is mainly in transportation, but also can be um, highly useful in other uh, domains such as domestic heating as well as um, general energy usage. Right. Dr. Abdesalem, Egypt occupies the fourth place globally in terms of the largest plants to generate electricity from solar energy that, of course, after the completion of the Bin Ban a solar uh, plant so with a capacity of 2,000 megawatts. Would you tell us more about the importance of using solar energy in, the, in our world today? Absolutely. Um, just to put things in perspective, um, Germany, for example, is the largest user of or generator of solar energy in the world and the sun doesn't shine there more than nine months a year. Egypt has got a very, very good advantage in that area. Um, the technology of generating solar power um, has been almost localized in Egypt due to our um, government um, uh, directions in that, in, in that area. Um, we are able to generate relatively cheap energy from solar, uh, again due to uh, the structure of this economy mainly devised by our government. Um, uh, sir, um, could you please um, tell us about the daily usage of renewable energy we can apply in our country, especially in the ongoing urban projects? Absolutely. Um, we all know that uh, the mandate of the current government is quite um, clear in terms of uh, alleviating poverty and creating jobs, etc. Um, we really need to realize the impact of climate change and how renewable energy will reduce such impact. The uh, Middle East and Africa region will have over 600 million people impacted by uh, global warming uh, in a negative way. Egypt is quite a leader in that space. Uh, because of the strategy of renewable energy and the sources and the technologies we are using from H2, from green hydrogen to solar power, we, d we even have wind power um, and others. The daily life of each one of us 
will be affected in so many ways. Um, the cost of energy will be will come down inevitably. If you're paying that much for your transport, it will be much less. Um, if you're using um, energy for heating, you'll get it much cheaper. Um, if you even if you're flying, you will get a much cheaper flight uh, because eventually Boeing, for example, is having a is having a, a development project in, in place to use green hydrogen instead of jet fuel. Um, so yes, um, what we really need to understand as individuals, even when we're, even we're not involved in that, is renewable energy is a serious issue and it will impact each one of us in our daily lives in so many ways. It, it is, uh, Dr. Abdel Salam. The question is, when, when, when will we get there? I mean, I mean, how, how will the world look like in 20 years from now or 30 years from now as far as the um, use of energy is concerned? Uh, um, and by, by the use of energy, I mean how much percent will be clean uh, energy usage? Um, you'll be, you'll be and how difficult will the tra how difficult or easy the transition to a clean and renewable energy will be in your view as an expert? Sure. So the fact is, or the shocking fact is, we don't have a choice. By 2050, we have to have zero emissions worldwide. If we don't do that, the, um, you've seen the catastrophes, the floods, the bushfires. It's getting worse by the minute, so we don't have much choice. Uh, Egypt has got an amazing strategy when it comes to COP27. And um, the key message is developed nations have contributed significantly since the Industrial Revolution into the current uh, disaster. Uh, they still do. Over 70% of pollution comes from developed countries. So they have to assist. We're not talking about financial assistance only, technology. How easy trans is the transition going to be? Every day, every minute, the technology is becoming easier, much faster to adopt. Uh, the current crisis in Europe, for example, has forced them to uh, really fast-track those technologies. So, and don't forget China, they've, they've got that technology um, uh, advancement. Uh, Egypt, however, um, is, a, is in a very good, unique position, given that we've got the manpower, the, the knowledge, the know-how, but also we have the, the, the geographical location, we have the government strategic directions, we have the access to cheap energy when it comes to gas, etc., which will generate uh, other clean energy. Um, and there is a mandate for the government to really protect the environment. Yes, it, it will happen. We don't have much choice. If it doesn't happen, it will be... And, and that's what happened in Paris, and that's what everybody agreed on. It has to happen. Dr. Hashem, uh, as an advisor in uh, environmental technology affairs, could you tell us more about environmental technology affairs? Absolutely. Um, uh, renewable energy and um, technologies related to new energies um, has been around since the 60s. There's nothing new um, uh, about the desire to, 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 to build it. However, any new technology is always very expensive and cannot be commercialized uh, in a sensible way at the beginning. Now, you add this to the actual fact that negative impact of global warming is becoming more and more worldwide, global. Uh, you've seen everything happening last year. And then there is a need to commercialize that technology and simplified so the developing nations as well as the developed nations can adapt it as you asked before Ahmed and um, they will adapt it uh, much quicker and easier. You have legacy systems everywhere to generate, produce and transmit energy and the last part is the most, the most difficult. You can generate as much energy as you like but to transmit it that's a challenge. That's why Egypt again has done a very smart step and we all know that about the liquefaction or the LNG liquefying natural gas you have the gas but how are you going to transport it um, it's either liquefied or through a pipeline pipeline is too expensive liquefaction is even more expensive but we've invested in that and we're now the, almost the world leader in, 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 in liquefied natural gas exports 
Wonderful. What I'm trying to say is the vision of, of our um, leadership is, 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 um, is sometimes uh, not given enough credit, but it is really, really world standard vision. I've worked in so many places around the world. I've seen how the, the vision of a leader can change things. Um, and I think we're, we're in, at that point now. And COP27 is in, a, is in a very great timing because the world has to come out of this conference, over 6,000 delegates, with a decision, with a strategy and a clear path and commitments. If it doesn't happen, uh, everybody knows what's going to happen uh, next. The other thing is we must understand that COP28 will be in United Arab Emirates. So that's how important this region is for, for the world. Great. Uh, uh, Dr. Abd Salam, the, the good news, as you mentioned, is the um, uh, fast uh, evolution of uh, technology. Uh, but the bad news might be the fact that the recent crises have uh, made uh, uh, the world's biggest polluters pollute the environment even more because they are stuck and because uh, they can't get the, the gas from uh, Russia as they did before so they are going back to coal or because you know China's um, slowing economy is dependent on uh, the industry which is dependent on coal so I mean there is a conflict of interests from so we have a reason to be optimistic but we also have a reason to be pessimistic so on which side of the coin are you Oh, definitely. I'm a born uh, optimistic, but um, we have to be very realistic, which is between optimistic and uh, pessimistic. I'm very realistic in, in that sense. However, we need to understand that the dynamics of, of, of this sector are quite uh, interesting and um, the decisions are not always made by uh, the, develop the developed or the super powers, simply because, interesting enough, most of the sources of energy, whether it's natural, fossil fuels, or even renewable, is not in the developed nations. So there's a lot of, well, let's say it's, it's, it's not a fair world, but it is. Uh, the fortunes, the sources are with the less fortunate, and the technology is with the fortunate. And it's a very simple uh, equation, uh, but you've, you've seen that, yeah. It's, ent it, it's, it's a matter of national interest. Um, you can't, um, I mean, uh, gone the days where you, where you can really force anybody to, uh, to, 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 to feed your interest. It's mutual interest. The world is, in one, is one place. It's global. Um, and we need to work together. So that's the reality. Eventually, we will have to. Yeah. Sir, um, how can we benefit from other countries' experiences in this field? Indeed. Um, the field of uh, renewable energies and technologies and energy technologies uh, is quite a, um, a global one. Um, those who manufacture or develop the technologies um, need the, um, the, the, the rest of the world to deliver those technologies and to, 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 um, to produce results, basically. Um, other countries, I, I can talk, we just mentioned Germany, they generate over 70% of their uh, energy from renewables. Um, I used to work for the New Zealand government and um, New Zealand is uh, clean and green, they call themselves clean and green, which is true. Um, and the environment, environmental laws and regulations are quite uh, strict. I think in Egypt what we need to look at uh, a little bit more is regulations. And um, I understand that Egypt is moving quite fast towards electric vehicles and, um, and new laws are being done as we speak, um, as you've seen in the economic uh, conference that ended today, uh, the minister was talking about um, uh, laws and regulations that will make it much easier and cheaper to buy an electric vehicle, which is going to make huge change uh, in Egypt. So um, regulations, that's, that's, that's a very important part of developing this sector. Um, other nations have also done well with education. Um, if we uh, embrace uh, the, the, the new technologies and teach those in universities, then we'll have great caliber of students who will then develop research. And um, we already have great examples in Dr. Zuel and others who actually invented um, and 
and were great scientists and led the world in, in those fields. So we can do that. So education, regulation, and um, and um, adapting the technologies themselves or deploying them as we already do that. Yeah, of course. The um, the I mean the solution is clear or the path forward is clear. But there might be a problem here. Um, allow me to ask you about this, Dr. Abdel Salam. Just like the, the fact that there is a problem on the world uniting or agreeing on uh, cutting emissions at the moment. Although, as you mentioned, to the, the world has to, everybody has to be realistic and realize we're in the same boat. The problem here, when you mentioned, for instance, uh, electric vehicles. I mean, it's costly. So. Again, making the transition will need a lot of investments, will, will need a lot of sacrifices. Once the transition is made, yes, the long term looks good. But how do we get through this intermediate phase at a time of economic hardships and, and, and inflation and so on? Well, it's a matter of strategy um, and um, it's a matter of deploying your funds in a longer term much better um, for better outcomes. Let me let, let's talk about electric vehicles. You, you mentioned that the the investment in establishing an electric vehicles or charging stations is substantial. However, uh, in the current um, advanced technology world, there actually been proven technologies to use normal home sockets to 220 volts to charge your car. So that's that's happening. Uh, the good news is it, it, it happens very quickly. The problems are solved quite quickly. It's a matter of making a strategic de decision and it's a matter of leadership. And here in Egypt, we've got that. We've got the leadership who wants to, 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 to develop that. But like anything our leadership is doing, it's done in a very clear strategy, very clear um, planning and execution plans and deliverables. It doesn't happen as a reactive uh, decision. It's very much proactive, and done in the. I've seen. I've seen some of the plans that, being done in different sectors. But, but it does take time. It has. It has to, uh, but you will feel the impact and the effect immediately. Uh, that's the good news. It's something that, uh, uh, for example, if if you have some serious issues, if you start chopping into the problem, you start seeing the the results very 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 quick and you I mean in Egypt you, you've seen that we have new parks we have uh, the walkways around Egypt you can um, I mean the traffic the traffic is one of the worst polluters you, you have all the new roads and so on if you compare the amount of carbon emissions that we had because of traffic bad traffic we've done very very well so uh, our country is really really doing very very well in that space we will feel the impact whether we feel it or not it's there Indeed, indeed. Um, and we're looking forward to Egypt's leadership uh, in Sharm uh, el in COP27, um, trying to unite the world. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Hisham Abdel Salam, uh, Economic Advisor in Environmental Technology Affairs, uh, for being with us. It's been a great pleasure. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Uh, Abdel Salam. And dear viewers, uh, um, we still have more to come here on Nile Cruise. I will be back, the Ormond Garden in Giza shortly. Don't go away.